Welcome back, everybody. Hey, I know what you're thinking. Where's Taku Hirano? I'll explain in a minute. Welcome back to Tuesday Music. We've got a lot to cover today, and today's theme is groovy or grooving, which I'm attempting to do. Uh, so let's go over. I'm going to go fix the graphic because that's ridiculous. Um, I wish Taku was here. We did do an interview. If you haven't seen that, check it out. Let me go over and say hello. I want to make sure everything's working. So I'm going to go over to the desk right now. Hang on. Stay right there. All right, let me see what is going on here. All right, hold on a second. <laughs> Look at the... All right, uh, let me see if I can go there. Okay, that's better. Um, okay, so let me see. You know what? I have to go. I am probably not in the right mode. I don't know. Let me see what's happening. Check my messages. Okay, sound is good. I seem to be in interview. Okay, I'm not in interview. I don't see any chat. Are you guys here? Because I'm not seeing any chat. Usually I see chat by now. I might have the, um, I might not have the settings set up right. So I'm a little, I'm a little uh, on my back foot today. I was doing a lot of stuff today and I did plan the show in my head. But I got some setup stuff I was working on right up until the show, and so I do apologize for the weird graphic thing. Um, so if you, welcome back, everybody. Um, let me check something, because I don't know that I am. I'm just going to go over to the uh, YouTube side so I can see why I am not getting any um any chat stuff oh there we go all right i had yeah see i'm still learning how to use this hey everybody uh <laughs> welcome <laughs> welcome roseanne say hi to roseanne everybody help it out um and hi rebecca and lacy so we got a, a few a few of the regulars and maybe we'll have a few more coming in all right um so sorry but i I literally, I usually go through the whole show and check all my slides and my, you know, my titles and everything. And I just didn't have time. And I kind of looked at it and I'm like, oh, that looks good. And I realized that I had used um, this slide for my interview with Taku Hirano. Hirano so I'm going to get rid of that. Let me see if there's anything else. I don't think there's anything else coming up that's uh, surprising. So, um, uh, today's theme is grooving. You know what I'm going to do is, so I'm going to go back to the, um, percussion area and welcome Beth. Um, I'm going to go back to my percussion setup and, uh, show you, uh, a new thing that I got and talk about some new toys that I'm starting to integrate. So welcome everybody. Glad you're here. Let's go back over to the percussion. Okay. All right. So I want to show you guys um, this thing. You can see this right here, right? You see that? I know it's kind of hard to see, but this is, there's a cowbell here. Let me see if I can show you on the overhead. There's a cowbell here, right? And you can see it on the side view uh, right here. And on top is a, a little um, striker. It's like really comfortable. Um, it's padded, right? It's got like neoprene on the top and it, this whole top is neoprene, but you can see here there's wood, like a scallop shape, and then there's a circle. And that, my friends, is a very cool striker. Uh, that, so I can play a cowbell. And I, um, I put this on right before I went live here. I just thought, you know, I'm going to try to use this. I just got them yesterday or the day before, picked them up, and it, it sort of clamped right on. I'll make another video on how to 
put these on and I'm I, I'm imagining that the uh, the website where I got the the company which is um, native tongue percussion and this is not a paid promotion they did send me this stuff but I'm not getting paid to do this uh, they have I'm sure they have instructions on how to do this but here's a wood block sound here's a bass drum beater that's a shaker so I'm gonna start using more of this but I just wanted to try the cowbell it works great so you can play congas. It's just right there. It's like, wow. So I think I want to try to put, I'll put a wood block on the other side of the, uh, of the conga. You can put them, you can put three things on one conga drum. It's kind of crazy. Um, maybe I'll, maybe they can go on the bongos. I don't know. It's just a new thing I'm experimenting with. So, um, I do want to talk about grooving and I'm going to later I'm going to talk about facilitation. We do have a video, a special video on uh, another one of the Emil Richards instruments. I'll play that a little bit later and then we'll I'll take your questions and, and hopefully give you guys some answers and then of course we'll have our Gimme 5 uh, li live looping towards the end of today's session. But I want to welcome you and I do I am going to talk about facilitation and what some people call drum circle facilitation. It's all music and it's drumming and you know, but if you want to call it a drum circle, you can. Uh, uh, but I want to talk about an important principle that I think sometimes people get into this trap or they have a misconception of what facilitation is. And I see this a lot and I've experienced it in the US and overseas. And um, I see it as a little bit of a, of a something to think about and maybe make a correction or think about, you know, maybe think about it differently than, uh, than we have been, or that some people are. So I'm gonna talk about that in a little bit. Um, right now, let's, let's look at what I'm playing here today. Uh, I've got, I know it's a tight view, uh, but set of bongos, one conga, and then uh, down, oh, I can't really show you, but maybe, yeah, I don't even know if you can see it in the other shot. Down here, I've got a farmer foot drums, uh, bass drum, let me turn the, and I've got a mic on that. Let me, I'm gonna give you just the bass drum mic. So I'm using that to capture hopefully some of the lower, the low end, and then the, the rest of the sound comes from the other mic up here. Um, we've got some kashishi. And then I have this cowbell. I did use, briefly I used the bottle cap rattle, which is, it's a great, you know, great thing, you guys can make this. This is made out of um, these little, they're kind of like, uh, what do you call it? The plastic um, ties, you know. I don't know what these are actually for in real life, but I use it like a zip tie, right? Kind of like a zip tie. But you could use it just about anything. And um, this took a lot of work, as you can see, to do this. There's a Bud Light, a high, uh, what is that, Heineken. So you can see I put a lot of effort into this and suffered with a lot of drinking. That was in college though. This is my college, this is way back in college when I made this. That's a long time ago. It's holding up well, although I lost a couple. But now I have a super small one. <laughs> it, it gave birth to a child. All right. What else? I've got a snare drum over here on a stand. This is a 13 inch, just a regular like snare. And then right here, I've got um, a pair of very small, I think that's probably 11 inch uh, hi-hats and just a, a small set of hi-hats on my hi-hat stand. I, I put this up kind of high <laughs> so I can reach it uh, because I'm you know, I'm playing bongos and, and other things. So I, I did put the hi-hat sort of high up. You know, these used to be, they used to play the, the reason it's called the hi-hat is because they used to call these sock symbols. And the reason they used to call them sock symbols is not because you punch them. It's because they used to have them on a little foot pedal and they were very low and they were down by your socks. <laughs> not not making this up. So I guess that was called the low hat or the regular hat. And then when they put it higher up, they call it the high hat. 
That's why it's called a hi-hat. But they used to be down low. If you look at pictures of like the first drum set players, which is hilarious because they literally put together like Chinese tom-toms and a big bass drum from the band, a snare drum, and they have these different cymbals, you know. But this was how they got the, you know, the cymbals, the cymbal sound from for one person, and they, but they were down low. They were way down there, and they raised them up, and I guess they started playing them with sticks and stuff. All right. Too much information. Um, but I hope in, in the beginning of this, you got the sense of, of just a groove. You know, uh, I, I hope all of you are, oops, am I loud enough? No, sorry. I had the wrong, I had my instrument mic on. Sorry about that. Um, I hope you guys are practicing um, playing uh, with a metronome and playing grooves and just, just playing like what they call in the pocket, right? So rather than playing a lot of fancy stuff, which sometimes I do, you know, just playing something simple. I'm playing softly because the mic's sensitive. Uh, or playing your marcha. You know, put on a click and just really practice playing steady time. Because if you play with other people or you go off and do a gig or even if you just want to jam for fun, that's what we do, you know, 95% of the time as musicians, as percussionists. We're just keeping time trying to fit a nice rhythm into uh, the bigger picture, whether that's, whether that's all drumming or it's in a song or you're just playing with a guitar player, for example. It's really critical. Uh, and it's, it's important that you all practice that at home with a, with a steady beat so you can get in a, a good idea of where you stand with regard to keeping a steady beat, keeping steady time, and, and really being honest with yourself about that and practicing that so that when you go out and play, because you're not gonna have a metronome probably, right? You, it's just you. And then you'll be playing with other people. And sometimes those people are gonna be leaning on you rhythmically. In other words, you might play with somebody that doesn't have great time, and that's even harder than keeping rhythm by yourself. So keeping rhythm by yourself is one thing, and I just made a video about a week ago on how to practice rhythm and timing, um, subdividing rhythms, which is a technique. Um, I, I wanna talk about that, and that's a way that you can work on playing in time and maybe playing at slower tempos, because when we play at a slower tempo, like, right, it's even harder to not slow down. Everybody usually wants to kind of slow down. Things tend to, you know, it's entropy, right? Everything sort of slows down, usually. Um, so in order to not do that, you can A, practice with the metronome, and B, you can subdivide in your mind one and two and three and four and one and two. And even, you can even go further. Just think of that. Like there's a shaker going, or a hi-hat. And subdividing is a good way to keep the momentum. So it's like a train, right? Right? Keep that subdivided beat going in your mind. All right? So that's a couple things. Play with the metronome, subdivide in your mind, in your mind's ear, uh, to help you stay in the groove, stay in the pocket, all right? Playing. And then when you go out and play with people, sometimes you got to push back. You know, people slowing down, they're speeding up, and you want to keep the, keep the steady beat, you know, keep it. Uh, as much as you can, you know, sometimes you just have to go with other people because they're not listening to you or each other and you just have to let the rhythm ebb and flow a little for, for the greater good. Um, you can't be uh, playing against other people in the group. Okay, so um, think about those things and think about any questions you might have in that regard and we'll get to that in the Q&A, but keep that in mind. Uh, so let me go mo come over back over to the desk now and we'll say hello to everyone and we'll get into the um, 
the videos. I got one video to play for you today, and I will be right there. All right. So it's just me here. No Taku Hirano. Um, but am I in focus? Hold on. Oh, there we go. And, uh, but if you guys haven't watched that uh, interview I did with Taku, please go watch it. Uh, and I'm I'm gonna bug him. I asked him if he could uh, take a short video of his percussion kit on the road. He's out there on the road, and I, I'm I'm gonna start bugging some of my percussionist friends who were on tour. And I thought it'd be really fun if we could do a little series, get some get a little series going of people showing us their kits. It's called Show Me Your Kits, <laughs> and or Show Us Your Kits, um, and. Uh, if you guys want to do that too, if you've got a kit, you can take a picture, post it on our Facebook group. We have a World Drum Club Facebook group. Or if you want to shoot a little video, you can upload your videos there. All right. So think about that. It's, I think it's great to see everybody's setups, whether it's just in your home and it's just for fun, you know, uh, or you're on the road or you're gigging or doing whatever. And I'm going to do that too. I'll show you guys more of what I'm doing when I get those uh, percussion attachments set up. All right, so uh, today I want to take you to to the the video uh, that is a it's a preview for you guys. These are not uh, posted on the channel yet. I will be posting these for patrons on our Patreon site, Patreon.com/Kalani. Where is it? Right here. And um, this is from the Emil Richards collection, courtesy of LA Percussion Rentals. And uh, it's pretty cool. It's another mallet instrument, another melodic instrument. Uh, I'm gonna play the video and I'll see you guys on the other side. Be right back. We're back. Okay, you guys, check this out. We found a really great instrument and Abby's gonna show you right now. Check it out. Hey, what do hey. we got? Okay, so this is the brass tube pipe gamelan. Pipe gamelan. Pipe gamelan, yeah. So this was actually built by Emil Richards himself in tune by him. And so the purpose of it was to be able to have like more of the um, Indonesian type of gamelan sound, mm -hmm. but with the tuning that could be used in a Western orchestra, the studio orchestras. And Emil told me that he used a lot of hard mallets on it, but being metallic, you can actually use so many different things on it and not damage it. So I've done like a bunch of bowing with it. Mm -hmm. That's haunting, isn't it? Yeah. And then, you know, you can also kind of do different techniques with bowing. So you could kind of do like some more tight bowing. Mm. Yeah. And almost pitch bend. You get control over it yeah. that way too. It's yeah. Not, yeah. It's pretty cool. And of course, if you're, you know, in the studio, you don't need to always be able to be, have to play loud to project. Right. So, um, you, know, you can try other things too. Like, like I was kind of just doing like, you know, your fingers. Yeah, because studio mics are gonna, they pick up, yeah. you know, your hair moving. I mean, they, <laughs> true. they pick up everything. That is very true. Yeah. If you, yeah, if you listen to some of these recordings, like I listened to, I remember like Jurassic Park, the original studio recording or whatever yeah. soundtrack. I'm like listening to it with headphones and you can hear like, you know, someone's shirt like, yeah. moving or like any Absolutely. little footsteps of anyone, just even like the bass player is just like moving their foot a tiny mm -hmm. bit. Yeah, so everything is picked up. So that leaves a very, very open situation with recording and sound. So you use it. And those are knitting needles, right? Yep, knitting needles. Knitting. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then going a little heavier, you could just use like, I don't know, these wood mallets, which I'm not sure I've ever tried on here. Uh -huh. Like that, yeah, yeah, that's nice. And of course, you don't always have to play open, right? So you could be like, yeah. Hear that little buzz in there? It's kind of cool. It is. And yeah. did you say that Emil would double this with other things? I mean, he did a lot of doubling with his instruments. So that, yeah. Yeah. A lot of times, these were done in overdub situations where they just need some more color. Uh huh. Yeah. Right. Sometimes, um, with everyone else as well. But the point was to be able to mesh with the tuning of a Western orchestra. Yeah. So here's a couple of other options. 
these kind of slap sticks. Yeah. Wow, nice. So you get the percussive quality, but of course you're not gonna damage the instrument, but it very, very percussive and yes. still brings out the tone. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. And so here's um, these bass marimba mallets. We use them on the bass marimba, if you saw that video. Mm. Oh, nice. Completely different yeah. instrument almost. Yeah. Let's see how it gliss sounds. Amazing. Whoa. Back of the sticks. Oh, I love that. That is, yeah. yeah, it's so expressive. I mean, that just right there, what you did, and just and then, imagine like, some sort of weird dream sequence or something. <laughs> Transition, know. you know. It's all acoustic. You yeah. haven't even done anything to it digitally. Yeah. Sometimes rattan is really cool on these instruments. I've never mm -hmm. tried this, so it might not actually work. So we're just gonna experiment for a second. You know, rattan has that really cool. Yeah, plan. right. But like, if it does that work on here, I don't know. I know on some mount instruments it does. Let's just try it. It does a little bit of pitch bending, but mm -hmm. a little yeah, bit. Yeah, you can hear it. Yeah. You can hear it on its own. Yeah, it doesn't affect the instrument per se, but you can it's blending with the instrument's sound. Yeah, so when you can so, take implements and the implement is really blending with the sound, that's when it gets mm -hmm. really interesting. Mm -hmm. And you're okay like doing things that are not traditional, like playing on the note, playing on the end, playing on the edges. And I think this is a shoelace? <laughs> Does it? <laughs> it probably is. It's a shoelace material. But he made this. Yeah, it is working, so we're keeping it for a while. So yeah, so yeah. you got all these eyelets and, and just the building materials. But I mean, somebody, you guys could make something like this yourself. It's a lot of work, but mm -hmm. you could do it, right? This is just a little, is it it's brass? In, uh, is it yeah, brass? and this is in the tuba phone family. So yeah. Yeah. I like how it's like tuba. Yeah. <laughs> And then here's the the last um, ones we'll try right now. So these oh, are okay. brass yeah. mallets. Yeah. 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 Okay. Again, I mean, amazing. It's all and like another instrument. Yeah. From where we started. Yeah, completely yeah. different. So yeah. I love this one. Yeah. yeah. And what is, the, what is the name again? What does he call it? It's kind of long. It's brass tube pipe gamelan. Brass tube pipe gamelan. Mm -hmm. All right, that's it, you guys. Wow. Um, what do you think? Thank you, Abby, for doing <laughs> that. Uh, amazing. Thanks to LA Percussion Rentals again, and. Um, you guys like, subscribe, hit the bell oh. before you click away <laughs> to make sure that you get uh, notifications. All right, we'll see you guys next time. All right, what do you guys think? Pretty cool. And again, uh, sorry about the audio earlier. Uh, sometimes I, I only can know how loud my audio is by looking at either my um, video setup over there or the computer monitor down here. I'm not monitoring the audio myself. So sometimes we make little mistakes here and there, just like life in general. <laughs> All right, so I wanna talk to you right now about facilitation, and then we're gonna move on to our uh, Gimme 5 intro. Where I'll show you all the instruments, and then we'll do Q&A, and then I will do the uh, Gimme 5 looping. Uh, and I do need to end on time. We've been going over the last couple of weeks, but I need to end on time today. So the thing I wanted to talk to you guys about, and, and I'm happy to take questions on this subject right now. If you have questions on other stuff, let's wait till the, uh, the Q&A. But right now, 
I want to talk to you about the idea of um, parallel. I, it's not exactly how some people would think of it, but I think of it as as parallel play versus interactive play. Now, um, you guys can imagine a marching band, right? A maybe there's a leader, you know, the what do they call it, the master, the grand master, or something. Uh, it doesn't matter. Let's just think of a marching band going down the road. Now, they're all really together, right? Usually. I just saw the Rose Parade and lots of great marching bands. Um, they're all playing in sync, right? But are they interacting? Um, or even an orchestra or sometimes a jazz band or different bands. Uh, are they, are they, you know, affecting one another by their playing? Are they, are they being affected? Are they making in the moment uh, decisions. In other words, are there is there playing? Does their playing have playfulness in it? Um, I would say no. In general, I would say that a marching band going down the street, they're you know they're performing. Of course, of course they're listening and paying attention to the the main beat, the main sound. But they're not. It's not really an interactive uh, a thing. It's 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 synchronized. You know, it's coordinated. It's um, there's lots of good things about it. I mean, it's it's a performance. And um, when we talk about facilitating, there's an idea that's been, kind of been going around, especially in drum circles or modern, what some people call modern drum circle facilitation, that the way to help people play together is to help organize them into a, a coherent group, right? Like where you stand up, and I've done this, I'm not, and this is not a criticism in any way, I'm just making an observation is that you you know you stand up and you can conduct people and you can say let's you know let's all go boom together and let's play faster let's slow down let's all stop let's all start let's all let's all do these uh, things and uh, it does help organize a group of people that absolutely you know conducting is a great tool for helping organize people people's playing efforts uh, into a, co a coherent and cohesive body um, however they are not necessarily uh, playing with each other or listening to each other. It's not interactive so much. It's reactive or responding to a leader. So um, I want you to think about that. And I mean, and if, and if you think I'm wrong about that, please let me know and let me know why, and we can debate it. But there's a difference between everyone following one person and then appearing as if they are all unified or, or even being completely unified. But be, just because people are doing the same thing, like starting and stopping playing at the same time, doesn't mean they're actually listening to or even paying attention to one another. They're all paying attention to one person. And so the result, and often we reward people for that, right? Like, especially I've seen people, you know, conduct a giant group of kids like doing a kid's drum circle with like 50 kids and they'll, you know, conduct them and they'll do all these things together. And I'm not, again, I'm not saying that doing that doesn't have value. And, but when, but it just reinforces uh, people being told what to do and following a leader and kind of like falling in line basically. Uh, and then we'll say, Hey, good job, everybody. Oh, yeah. You know, we'll, and we'll congratulate people for that kind of behavior. And uh, again, while there is some value in that, it's certainly, um, there's nothing wrong with, you know, uh, participating in something where everybody is coordinated and everybody's doing something together. And there is a feeling of power and success and achievement, you know, that goes along with doing that kind of stuff. But what I want, what I want to get to, I'm getting to the point of my, of the, this idea of facilitation is that conducting is controlling. It's, it's a command. Right, where you're when you conduct people, you are telling them what to do, right? It's a command, and it's a it's an it's really like a it's an order. It's a it's follow this, do this, um, and I want to I want to juxtapose that with the idea of helping people play together, and maybe playing in a way that's just supporting their play, and and encouraging people to actually listen to one another and then respond to one another and to create something together. And that is really what a drum circle is. That's what a drum circle is about. It's always been about that. 
It's always been a community creation. So when we talk about facilitating a drum circle or any kind of community music, what we're really talking about is being of service. We're talking about helping people to connect with each other and listen to each other, you know, which means giving them the space and the time to do that, to actually play something that's coming from them, right? Play something that's coming from yourself. Allow people the space and the time to listen to each other doing that and then connect with each other in that space and have it be a playful and creative process that unfolds in an organic way and a natural way uh, to create something unique for that group of people at that moment. And that um, is something that I feel very passionate about and I have ways of helping people gain the skills and the competencies and the awareness to do that and to not you know, just command people to behave in a way that looks, it makes it look like they're actually listening to each other when in fact they're just following uh, one person. So we ought to be careful about the way, I think, this is my opinion, we should be careful about the way we use the word facilitation and not replace the word conduct with facilitation to give the impression that we're actually facilitating something when in fact we are commanding people. For example, uh, I've heard people say, well, I facilitated a stop or I facilitated people playing on the beat, right? Or I facilitated the speeding up. And actually, in most cases, it's not really a matter of facilitating it. You just do it. You just did it. Like you told everybody to do it and they did it. And that was successful, right? Everybody stops because we stopped them. But I would argue that that's not so much facilitation. That's just conducting, which is, again, which is a command. It's, a, it's an order. Uh, facilitation is when you notice maybe a tendency or a trend or you, you, or you, you either notice or you happen to know what, a goal, what the goal is for the group, you know, because they told you. Or you, you observe something happening and then you, you guesstimate that, oh, well, it seems like they want to head in this direction, right? It seems like maybe, you know, they're trying to go over here. Let me help them. And that's what facilitating is. Facilitating is making something easier, but the question is always, what are you making easier, right? And that should be coming from your participants, the what. Here's what we're trying to do. Okay, good, let me help you. <laughs> you know, Instead of, hmm, I, I, I feel like I'm gonna stop everybody now, so I'm just gonna stop them. Uh, I was in China once, I was doing a workshop for music teachers and I was teaching music, I'm teaching drumming, I'm teaching a lot of other stuff, ukuleles and, and some native flute. And at the end of the day, they said, can we have a drum circle? Let's have a drum circle. I'm like, yeah, go ahead. And uh, they, they, it's interesting because they had, some of them had been to a training recently. And so they all got in a circle, they all set up and they all started playing. And immediately this woman said, can I facilitate? I'm like, yeah, go ahead. You know, I mean, they just started. So it wasn't like, we really needed to change anything. And uh, she got up and just started doing all, you know, I call it slicing and dicing and, uh, you know, just like sectioning off the group and then you guys stop and you guys play and you guys echo me and this and that. And I thought, wow, you know, this is interesting because I grew up in the Bay Area, you know, kind of in one of the cradle, the homes of drum circles. And it's interesting to see like where the whole idea of drum circle facilitation is now. Um, and where it's developed over like the last 30 years, uh, it's, just, it's just interesting to me. Um, so what do you guys think? Agree, disagree? If you want to argue with me about it, I'm happy to do that <laughs> anytime. Uh, I like to use what I call musical facilitation, which is uh, facilitating through the way you play, uh, you know, like grounding, playing the beats, being supportive musically, I feel really strongly about the idea that you can facilitate almost exclusively through the music that you play and the music as a guiding element that you kind of infuse into the group yourself as a participant. And you'd be surprised how much you can actually do, how much you can affect the group uh, in terms of organizing, in terms of uh, speeding up, slowing down, fading out, you know, reducing the volume, uh, adding intensity. 
introducing rhythmic ideas. You can do all kinds of things just through the music that you put out. But you do need to have music skills to do that. And you need awareness. You got to listen and be able to play and uh, not be too pushy, not be too controlling, you know, try to be cool. And to me, that's the most exciting way of facilitating. So, all right. Um, keep checking the chat. And thank you, Roseanne, for keeping the conversation going. So I want to go now to um, introduce you guys to the Gimme 5 uh, instruments. And then we'll do a little more Q&A. So hang on a second. We're going to go back over. Back over to the percussion area. Get my cameras going. All right, so I know you guys can't see down over here. Actually, you can kind of see it in the uh, in my desk mic, but I mean my desk camera, but it's not in focus. I'll, what I'm going to do is show you the instruments in the overhead. So for today, all right, hold on. Before we do this, uh, give me five. For those of you who don't know, is our uh, I take five instruments that you guys suggest. Each one of you can come up with a list of five. I'm going to go through the instruments right now. Uh, if you don't remember the names, don't worry about it. Just put something in there that you think works. And, uh, and then Roseanne will pick one of your sets of five. And if you like, you can also include like a tempo. So in other words, I will use the five instruments that you choose to play. Some sort of live looping thing. You could say, okay, slow, medium, or fast, right? If you want. Um, if you want, you could suggest a style. And then what I encourage you to do is you could do a dedication. So dedicate it to somebody and then tell them and they can come watch this and they'll see that you dedicated the piece for them. So I think that's kind of cool. If you'd like to dedicate it towards a cause or a group of people or you're one of somebody you know, whatever you want, you can dedicate it to anything. Okay, so here we go. I'll just stick here. I'll stay on this camera for a second. So this is a set of... Um, I think this is a Pete Engelhart bell set. These are fairly, um, they have a lot of sustain. And this is the set of three, let's just call this a triple agogo Pete Engelhart. Engelhart, let's just say triple agogo. Or three bells. And then we've got a temple block. You could say woodlock. We've got a regular agogo. It's hard to see in the light. So I'll go double, double bell. We've got a tambourine. I've got a kabasa here. We've got the kashishi from earlier. I've got a maraca, <laughs> just a single. Where's the other one? I think it's down there. Maraca. I've got a little cl egg cluster. Then we've got bongos, of course, uh, a conga. We've got the drum, the bass drum down here. Hi-hat over here. And snare, snare drum. Or, or a uh, drum with no snares. Uh, and then cajon, of course, which I have down here. And that's it. That's all we have for today. Let me see, unless you can think of something that I've got close by and I'll be happy to grab that for you guys. All right, so that's all the Gimme Five stuff. Of course, drum set could be one thing too. You could just say the, the drum set stuff. All right, um, I'm gonna go back over to the desk and we'll do some Q&A. By the way, I know I've played this before, but this is one of my favorite. This is my uh, water bottle. Check this out. It's resonant. Okay, it's it's time for Q and A. So, um, by the way, you guys. Available at Teespring. Get your uh, World Drum Club swag over there. 
Um, all right. So questions, answers. I'm glad we're getting some. Give me five uh, suggestions. By the way, uh, for those of you who are interested in facilitation, um, there is an entire uh, course at our Patreon page, uh, which is, it's listed up above me, but I'll just show you right now. Patreon.com slash Kalani, you guys know. Uh, there's a whole course over there uh, that's, a, it's called the Drum Circle, A Musical Approach. And I talk about all these uh, techniques, I think there's nine of them, specifically that and I talk about them I show them you see an example real world example of me doing a drum circle using every technique uh and um that's included with the courses tier as are all the courses for the cost of like one dvd um which I used to sell dvds which I don't anymore but uh for the cost of one dvd you get like eight seven eight nine courses I don't know it's every it's all the courses so there's a drum circle one, and then there's the musical games for groups, which is related to that, of course. And then I've got other videos where I've talked about and demonstrated some techniques and ideas and talk about facilitating. Uh, I also have some videos that uh, have to do with um, therapeutic drumming and all kinds of stuff over there. A lot of that's just on the Patreon site. So um, you can get access to that if you want to become a supporter, which I hope you do. All right, we had a um, question from Lacey Joyce. What is the strangest thing you've ever used as a as a percussion instrument? Wow, I'd have to think about that. I did for a minute. I don't know if I have it anymore, but I used to have a, a bedpan drum. <laughs> I bought some instruments from this guy named Mark Stevens. He's a percussionist. That's where the Mark tree came from. And uh, he had some cool stuff. And one of them was like a bedpan with some uh, brass rods like welded to it. And it just had a weird and, you, and then you could hang it up and you could hit the rods and stuff. But it was made out of a bedpan. That was pretty funny. Uh, so it was like a metal, you know, a metal sculpture kind of sound. Uh, I've also used some children's toys some, or, or like dog toys, you know, little squeaky toys. Um, yeah, I would say, I don't know how weird those are, but maybe unexpected. You know, we used to go to toy stores a lot when I was in college, and we you can search for nice, you know, good noisemakers. There's some good stuff you can find in toy stores, especially the toy stores that sell actually hand, you know, actual handmade, like wooden toys, not, not all the plastic stuff, although some of the plastic stuff sounds great. So you can check that out. But I would say, yeah, probably in the found sound category, bedpan gong was one of the weirdest. Uh, another question um, from MP. Are you familiar with Royal Harrington? Hart or Hartigen? Royal Hartigen. Um, not I think I've heard the name, but I, you know, I don't, I don't, nothing comes to mind uh, specifically. But if you have a link or something you want to share, put it in the chat. Uh, you can do that. Um, the instruments you showed in the beginning, one was a cowbell. Where did you get those? Are you talking about the the one with the the striker on it, the cowbell on the side of the drum with the striker? Uh, that I'll, I'll tell you the name of the company when I get back over there. But yeah, those are I think the company's in Arizona. All right. Um, do we have a? Are we decided on the Gimme Five? Um, yet. And Lacey Joyce says, silica gel packets makes a good shaker. That's true. Also, salt packets. If you, if you uh, have a, a good mic, <laughs> you can, you can play salt or sugar. Yeah, not salt packets. What am I talking about? 
sugar packets. You get a really sweet sound. You guys knew a dad joke was coming sooner or later, right? It's not a it's not a Tuesday Muse Day without without some bad puns. Welcome Cornelius, welcome back, and Beth. Shaman Zito, Daryl is here. MP John Paul Santiago, welcome back again. Claudia. Good to see everyone. I'm glad. I'm I'm really happy you guys are joining us. I hope this is a, you know, something that helps you guys throughout your week and along your journey, your percussion journey. All right, give me five. Uh, is that that's the choice, right? Daryl Conga snare Kabasa bongo maraca Latin style. <laughs> Claudia, so this is my drummer husband would test the drumsticks on his head. Well, does that mean he has a drum head? An extra drum head. Okay, thank you for the gimme five. Um, I think I'm going to get on with that because uh, we're, we're running out of time here. By the way, you guys, um, every month... I think this date is already passed, but every second and fourth Saturday, uh, Sunday, sorry, Sunday, we're doing the percussion master class. Yeah, don't, don't, uh, just ignore this date. Uh, here, let me fix it. <laughs> Oop, hold on. Updating live. Uh, second and fourth Sundays, uh, percussion masterclass for patrons. It's like a little private, you know, class for you guys. So that is for patrons, supporters of the channel. I'm doing as much as I can. Uh, and <laughs> Roseanne says, aren't we all drum heads? I guess we are. That's a good point. Hey, Daryl, welcome. Okay. Let me go, um, uh, are those Sunday Zoom meetings recorded? Um, not at this time, but they could be. Yeah, they could be recorded. Uh, but again, they probably would only be available for patrons, but maybe all patrons. Uh, right now, it is open to all patrons, but I'll probably be moving that to people at the courses tiers only. It kind of depends on how many people show up, but um, I'm trying to do more for the, you know, the community at large, but I do want to encourage you guys to chip in and, you know, if you chip in a little, uh, like I said, I mean, for, for about the cost of a fancy cup of coffee per week, you can get all the courses and get all the, you know, all the meetings and all the live stuff um, through the Patreon uh, thing, which I think is a, an amazing deal. Because I don't know about you guys, but I've been to a lot of workshops. I've spent thousands of dollars on on my own education uh, as a percussionist. And with everything like this kind of stuff, I mean, it's just so much cheaper now. It's so much easier to get information and and talk to percussionists and and meet them and connect. I mean, not in person. That still takes a lot of money and time, but there was no, there was none of this live chat stuff back in the day, you know, when I was uh, in college or even after for years, there was none of that. And, you know, we had to, I had to go to Mexico or you had to go to, you know, West Africa or you had to go to, so you had to get on a plane and go somewhere and study. So there's, and I still think it's great to do that, do that but it's just so affordable now to, to get good information. Um, you know, DVDs, vid videotapes, I have videotapes that used to cost like $60 for a VHS, it wasn't even good quality. <laughs> and we were buying those for 60 bucks. All right, I'm gonna do some music um, and I'll come back and say goodbye before we go, but let me uh, let me get to it. All right, so we're doing Daryl's Gimme Five, hang on. All right, let's get set up. So we have conga, snare, kibasa, 
and and maracas yeah so bongos bongos congas snare i'm i'm going to sneak the bass drum in there too um in the latin style so yeah okay good and oh and maraca so Kabasa and maraca i have to get, i have to get fancy i have to think of something to do to use both of those okay so let me reorient myself here i'm going to clear the looper um and turn off the effects and get a tempo so you guys i don't know if you, you guys may or may not know this but when i start looping i uh i usually do have a beat you know going in my ear so i have something i have a reference a reference point uh let me see All right.
All right. What do you guys think? I don't know. Was that groovy? <laughs> All right, I'm gonna come back, say goodbye, and uh, yeah, meet you over at the desk. Hang on. All right, folks. Hey, thanks for uh, being here. Uh, again, I hope to see you at our Patreon site. Make sure you check us out on the Facebook. On the Facebook. The Facebooks. We do have a Facebook user group, and um, some of you are on there, and you're pretty active. That's a great way to stay connected during the week. It's also a space that we use for sharing stuff that we all find. Um, if you find a video, share it. People are sharing articles, videos, music, uh, all kinds of stuff. And you can get some questions answered. It's just a good way to touch base. Uh, so check that out. Thank you again. Thank you, thank you. And uh, let's see, what happened to the thing? Oh, check this out. Let's see, can I make it pop up there? <laughs> so this is the, uh, this right here is the uh, coffee thing, buy me a coffee. You guys could scan that, get out your phone right now, scan it and you can donate something. If you're not a member and you just wanna be like, hey, that's cool, I appreciate you doing the Tuesday Muse Days, it's fun, I get something out of it. If you did feel like you got something out of it and you'd like to uh, reciprocate with a tip, a little donation, you can do that, scan that QR code and it's super easy to do that, all right? We appreciate that. And uh, yeah, you guys, that's about it. Uh, next week, I don't know. What do you want to see? That's another thing we can do at the Facebook group and on, on our Patreon. You guys can message me over there. Uh, let me know what you what you want to see, and we'll try to schedule it in. I will be getting back to the uh, reflections of Yanni. We got some of that, and we of course have readings. Um, it's always a little different every week. But I will see you guys next Tuesday, and then uh, I have to go down to um, Orange County and do a couple days of workshops at a university down there. So it'll be next Tuesday. It'll be uh, right before I get on the road and go. You guys have a good night. Appreciate you. Thanks to Roseanne Musser again for hosting and being our kind of moderator, keeping everything going. Um, Thank you. Thanks for every thanks everybody for being here. Have a good night and we'll see you next time.